So welcome everybody to All Accountant uh, Plus Community Deep Thought number three. Today's topic is, what if Disney offered accounting services with Ron Baker? We start every Alt Accountant session with the Alt Accountant Manifesto. So let's read them. And this is the closest thing we have to a church. So we have to repeat it every time because the repetition doesn't hurt the sermon. So we're uniquely positioned to help our target customers. That alludes to positioning. We are known as the experts in our specialty. That alludes to niching down, specializing, being really, really good at one thing. I modified number three. It used to be called we strive to understand why and what the customer's desired outcome is. And I changed two words. I changed from strive to listen because of an epiphany situation I had the last couple of weeks where I had to only listen and I couldn't talk. And it's amazing when one of your senses is shut down and you are aware that you cannot respond, how different you listen and how attentively you, you listen and how you listen with your eyes as well. You start noticing body language and stuff like that because you're not thinking about a response because you can't respond. So it's pretty amazing when when you go through that. So unfortunately, I, I couldn't speak for a week, but also fortunately, I think I, I drew some interesting um, life lesson from it. So this was called, we listen to understand why and what is the customer's desired transformation. So um, I used to use the word outcome a lot and um, something that I learned from Ron quite a bit, outcome results, but with the transition to the subscription business model and um, just, I was reminded of Simon Sinek's book, The Infinite Game, and the subscription business model is the infinite game, right? It's, it's so we're always playing and we're always adding value and there's never an ending, right? There's never a combination, right? So um, transformation needs to also potentially evolve to continuous transformation, like continuous and sustained transformation. So it's not just solving a problem, it's just preventing problems in the first place and putting customers um, in a path to continuously be where they want to be. So the fourth one is we price, our price is a fraction of the value we provide. Like you have to, you have to, in your mind, believe that what you're doing is worth 20,000. So when you charge 5,000, you know it's a great deal, right? So, so you, you can never ever believe that your price is higher than the value you're creating. Fifth one is we always give our customers choices on how they can work with us. And I think Ron will uh, start um, backtracking the concept of, of, of choices when we start getting into subscriptions. And that's gonna be an interesting journey for us as well as uh, we, we, we move to subscription in our accounting practice. We will be effective even at the risk of being inefficient. Ron says this, Blair N says this, Chris Doe says this, um, Ed Kless says this. Like, in order to be effective, you have to be inefficient. It's baked in. Being inefficient is baked in in order to be effective. Like you have to do things that don't seem productive to arrive to the eureka moment where you can do the thing that actually um, it's effective at solving your client's problem, satisfying your clients, whatever the end goal is. And the last one is we, we can automate workflows, but we have to humanize relationships. I, there's no way, there's no app, there's no software, there's no AI, right? That's going to be able to enhance a relationship. It can enhance the speed on which the information that they're asking for gets to them, which allows you to spend more time building that relationship. But AI software will never, will never humanize a relationship, will never improve a relationship. It can improve the conduit to which we communicate to them, which in turn it has a relationship, but it will never be a replacement for humans. Homework number two, okay? So it's a different piece of homework is, assume that Disney starts offering a service called Business Builders Plus, okay? They're gonna add the plus in there. That's how Disney works. Um, it's gonna be $6.99 a month. So I'm immediately just giving you a price so you can start you know, creating whatever that means in your head. 700 bucks a month, and they're gonna offer bookkeeping, tax returns, and quarterly tax planning only to contractors of Disney. So they're going to start very simple. They know their audience, right? They've been working with the, Disney must have thousands and thousands of contractors. This would be low hanging fruit for Disney to start 
helping their contractors be financially stable so they can be better contractors for Disney, okay? Disney purchased a 14-person full accounting firm in Orlando that will be managing the entire process, serving clients all over the country. They project to have about 500 clients by the end of the year. So I'm just giving you a realistic possible scenario of how this can happen because I want you to don't only think about this as, a, as an elusive concept, like think of it in tangible terms. This can happen, okay? Legal Zoom, right, which had nothing to do with accounting, did something like this. They bought an accounting firm. You know, they, they're serving clients. They have a very specific scope. They do everything that the client asked for, okay? So this is very similar to what Legal Zoom did and many other companies are doing. I think Disney could do it all as well. So based on that, these are the five questions I want you to do this exercise in your mind. So number one is when these contractors talk to Disney about their services and they ask, how are your services different than my local CPA office? My question to you is, how do you think a Disney employee will be trained to answer that? Because, you know, Disney employees don't improvise. Okay? I mean, they do have some sort of improvisation, but everything they do is within the framework of a larger story because Disney is always telling a story, right? So, so Disney will train their employees to be a particular cast member of that story. And they have a role, right, in that customer's journey in answering this question. And so how would Disney put this together? Question number two, Disney calls its employees cast members, okay? What unique term do you think Disney would give to their accounting service team members like how would they reframe they wouldn't say team or employee or staff okay they're gonna they're gonna use something creative second is they call their customers guests what do you think would be the unique term they will have for us their customers of their accounting service because words are powerful right you change the name of the customer to something cool and creative and the meaning of the customer now changes you change the name of the employee to cast member the meaning of that employee and the purpose of that employee changes, right? Because a cast member is putting on a play, right? It's not doing accounting, it's putting on a play. So what name would they use? They could use the same also, but what do you think that would be? Third is Disney's values are optimism, innovation, decency, quality, community, and storytelling. How would you connect each of those words to our industry, to what we do for our customers? And start start thinking about how Disney will put this together based on their values. Last one is Bob Iger, CEO of Disney Currency. He's back a CEO, by the way. He was CEO, he stepped down, he's back. He says in his book, the path to innovation begins with curiosity. Path to innovation begins to curiosity, with, with curiosity. So my question to you is, what have we not been curious about? What do we need to start becoming more curious about? Because you know, that if Disney enters our profession, they're gonna turn on that curiosity to the max and they're gonna discover things faster than we could because it's in their lifeblood to begin innovation with curiosity. So these are the questions I want you to think about. We're gonna email you this. Carlos is gonna put a template to, for you for you to answer the questions and share them in the mastermind. I am going to just give it to Ron and ask Ron the question. Ron, what would it look like if Disney where to offer accounting services? <laughs> well, I think they would up the game. Um, they would up the customer experience for sure. They would certainly up the price, but that's because they're going to add more value by having a more frictionless, more convenient uh, customer experience. So I, I think it would be amazing if Disney entered um, just on a macro perspective, if you look at net promoter scores, and I know people have problems with NPS scores and are they predictive? Are they, do they mean anything? But just in general, net promoter score across the accounting profession is about 25. You compare that to Apple, which is somewhere in the 80s, BMW, Porsche, somewhere in the 80s. I think Disney's up there in the 80s. You know, we're pretty dismal when it comes to customer experience because it's not something we think about. And I think that we compete against any organization that has the ability to raise our customers expectations. And that means accounting firms do compete with Disney. They do compete with Amazon when they log onto your portal and website and they have digital interactions with you or face-to-face -face interactions, they're comparing it to Amazon. 
and you know amazon's one click and shows up the same day or the next day it doesn't get much simpler and easier and more convenient than that and i think it would force us to up our game i think we've become kind of complacent well, this is a good question um you know technology has been constantly improving right ever since the the computer hit the desktop and we were able to use spreadsheets and and of course now we have bots and artificial intelligence we were just playing with the uh what is it chpt thing that can write um you know artificial intelligence that can write a story or something um th this is th th these are all fantastic tools they they allow us to automate they do allow us to uh you know technology should kill hours basically it eats hours for a living that's what it does we can do a lot more things in less time and that's going to that's going to do nothing but improve but in my mind that's only one part of the system the other part of the system is that human interaction and that's something that we can't automate as you said in one of your slides you have to humanize that and that means that part of the system has to be less efficient than the other part i mean we always say we have no problem being efficient with things you just don't want to be efficient with people and what worries me about all this tech coming down the line well there's a couple worries i have one is when you listen to the software companies say well we we're automating this to save you time so you can take that time and you can invest it in more higher value services for your customer okay that sounds good but i'll tell you hector what i see is yes it saves us time and we take that time that we take that freed up capacity and what do we do we go out and we get more of the exact same type of work and we don't climb up on that value curve um and the other thing that worries me about technology is using as a using it as a replacement for customer interaction you know this is a relationship business and we always say that but i think it's rhetoric i think it's about time that we align our business model with our rhetoric and we say we put the relationship first we say we want to be your trusted advisor we say you we want you to call us first even if we can't solve the problem maybe we know somebody who can in our social capital network or whatever um but when you look at our business model what are we monetizing we're monetizing services scope of work you know and we get all caught up in the outputs and we never think enough about the outcome to the customer and that's what's scaring me about technology it's it's so good at automating the repeatable predictable stuff that it should free us up to go work with the customer more on transformations but we're not doing that we're just we're just adding more of the same repeatable predictable work that can be automated and that's what scares me and that's why i think we have too many customers and that's why we don't have enough time to engage them in deep conversation ask them more beautiful questions and guide more transformations for them. Okay, so if I get this straight, um, we go out there and buy some practice management software or some add-on for QuickBooks that cuts, cuts down all the manual processes.